Hey everybody, got a uh, Conso sewing machine, Premier 1206 RB-1, and uh, breaking a few needles here. So in this video we're going to diagnose the timing, why it's off underneath here. Um, the problem's probably in the bobbin holder, and we'll go through retiming it and showing you guys how to reset the bobbin holder so it's in its fixed position. So let's uh, lift it up and see what we got going on under here. So if you rock the machine back like so, right under here, <clears throat> Obviously, I got my bobbin holder out, but you can see this portion right here in the middle, the bobbin carrier holder, shouldn't be rotating with this outer assembly itself, the part that creates the lock stitch underneath. So, I had a minor jam up while I was running this and I backed it out went to cycle it around again blew the needle apart so I'm assuming this bobbin holder rocked back just enough and it just it got in the way of the needle coming down and just slammed into it so <clears throat> if you guys haven't been under these machines a lot this bobbin holder right here that you snap your bobbin into shouldn't be rotating with the entire assembly. So, I don't know if I can catch it on the video here, but right... Uh, let's see, I'm trying to hold this in. So, see that right there, that little square indentation? That should lock up once you pull this assembly all the way forward, oops, try and line that up. So that should line up right there. See how it kind of snaps in. Now just this portion spins, this outer piece, and that top, or the bobbin assembly holder stays stationary. So. If you do jam it up really bad, that's made to kick in and it'll break away and spin like that. So you want that lined up just so you can slide this assembly to my left, also your left, and it should lock in right there, like top dead center, like so. So now we can put our needle back in the needle holder and we'll set the timing so it's right in line with this when this comes around to actually catch the thread. So. Oh, I forgot to mention the reason why this portion is so loose and I can turn it by hand is I have the three screws loosened. There's one right there, right here, and there's two more. Oops. Let's see. So, there's one. There's a second one. The other two are kind of recessed. They don't protrude out as much as that first one. So in order to get this to spin free, you got to loosen those three screws. There's one. There's two. And that third one kind of has that flat surface that stands out a little bit. So loosen those three. Then this obviously slides back and forth on that center shaft, the drive shaft. And we can set our timing now. So uh, first thing, let's get our... Like I said, our bobbin holder locked in and 
this assembly pulled forward. And then I'm going to tighten this screw, uh, this tall one, right where it is now. And we'll set the timing with our, our hand crank over here on the side of the machine. Let's tighten this with our assembly pulled all the way to the left and the bobbin, I keep saying bobbin holder, bobbin assembly uh, locks into this portion. And then as we have this pulled forward all the way so that stays in place. So now when we rotate our, ha our handle of the machine right here, just that outer uh, portion that catches the stitch coming down from the needle is rotating and not the bobbin holder assembly itself. So that's what we want to at least start retiming the machine. So let's close this up, see how far off we are when we put a needle in the needle holder. Threaded. I'm ready to check our timings. All right. Now we can see what's going on here. Maybe. <laughs> I guess I hit you guys. you were already too late so that little pointed section right there should be catching that loop of the needle coming down so yeah we're we're way far behind so if we roll this back about 30 degrees we'll be closer to where we need to be so let's see if we can catch one of those that one screw I tightened here on the Find it right there. There's one of the short ones. That's the one I'm looking for. So now we can loosen this. And let's re retard that assembly. So I can roll this back. See our timing's going backwards. Retighten that where we're at. Obviously, not letting that assembly slide away so our bobbin holder assembly is still locked into place. Let's see where our timing's at now. I have to excuse my bird upstairs. Oh. So, see how that little V section is coming in before the needle's coming down. So we gotta roll that back a little bit more. Let's try another 30 degrees. So there's my screw. That I'm, I only have one of the three screws set. That's because we're doing an adjustment, so. Oops, uh-oh. So I let that come away. Hopefully I didn't miss. I can reach underneath and feel that that's still caught. So let's reset that. And let's try it again. It's closer. Let's 
So there's the V, there's the needle. A little bit more back. I'm retarded a little bit more. So you guys couldn't see what I did there, but I actually held the uh, lower stitch assembly and then I rotated the uh, machine with the hand crank on the right forward. So that will help retard that stitch. All right, here we go. Oops. A little more. I'm getting there. Say inching it, but we'll just keep rotating it around until we get that to catch just right. So, all right, I'm gonna rotate this backwards so you guys can see what I'm seeing here. So, you see the needles coming down, and right as it starts to come up, it's gonna put that slack in the thread and that's what that V is going to catch. So you can see that little loop right there it's starting to form and the needle's coming up and that V is going to catch it right there and start that lower lock stitch. Obviously the needle's out of the way now. It can complete the cycle. Let's rotate it around just to make sure we're not impacting again. needles down it's creating that slack and it caught it again so I think we're good right here if you listen closely you can just hear it just I think we're a little bit early because it's just catching the needle see right there how it's wanting to bounce the needle so we gotta bump that just a little bit forward I'm sorry, backwards. All right. <clears throat> so I think we got it here. You see the needles coming down. There's two tricks to this, getting it right. You want that to catch just like it is, but also not impact the needle while it's down. So that's going to be your left to right adjustment so it clears the needle and then your rotational timing that that screw we we're adjusting and rotating and retarding the uh, carriage assembly is has to be set right so you want to be to the left enough to where your bobbin holder uh, assembly that holds your bobbin doesn't spin because you want it to lock into that notch that's just below the um, presser foot and then you want to be to the right enough, though, that your um, locking stitch uh, catch hook right there is not impacting the needle. So you kind of have a slight tolerance there, left to right, where you're going to be setting this um, in position. And then, obviously, having your rotational timing with those three screws loosened um, to adjust this rotation to set that just right so it catches that thread coming through there through the needle um, for your lock stitch so and then now that you have your thread catching right there around, obviously if you don't have a bobbin in there it's gonna snag in the center of the where the, the bobbin locks in there on that center post but at least you know you got a timed stitch now so we can put this all back together See if we can keep sewing again. Alright, got our screws tightened, our plates back on, bobbin loaded. Let's see if she'll sew.
Here goes nothing. A lot better than what it was doing so looks like we got it thanks for watching uh, if you guys and gals found this content helpful appreciate it if you like and there subscribe check out some of my other videos on fixing travel trailers and other household repairs thanks bye